Bajuri Gemarua, Dian, Babana, Gemarada, Gadigal, Nura. On behalf of Metro Local Aboriginal Land Council, it's a great honour and privilege to open in Gadigal. The words that I open in, I thank Patty Garang for her gift in passing on the Gadigal language. Those words translate to g'day, women, men, comrades, friends. On behalf of Metro Local Aboriginal Land Council, the rep body for 26 local government areas, covering from what we know as Takora or the Georges River, up and beyond Darubin or what we know as the Hawkesbury River, we cover indeed 26 local government areas from Canterbury Bankstown to Cessnock. I'd like to acknowledge all the First Nations within those areas, from the Eora, the Gadigal that I open in, extending out to Gandangara country in the mountains, up to Wanarua country in the far north and coming from Durrawal in the south. That is the boundaries of Metro Local Aboriginal Land Council, the council that I represent. And today I believe it'll be 14th anniversary of the Imagine Awards for New South Wales Government. I'd like to congratulate all the nominees and more importantly look forward to finding out who the award winners are for this 14th award winners for the Imagine, for the New South Wales Galleries and Museums. It's a great honour and privilege as a First Nations body to work with the government, more particularly with museums and galleries, and celebrating the various and deadly programs and people that work in art galleries, museums, sharing culture with community, as we like to call it, or art at its best. So again, Bajuri Gamarua, g'day to all, and may you all have a deadly evening. Welcome to this year's 2021 Imagine Awards. My name is Brett Adlington and I'm the CEO of Museums and Galleries of New South Wales. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and all other traditional custodians of the lands in which we all live and work. We pay respect to them as First Nations people with continuing connection to land, place, waters and community. Before we announce tonight's winners of this year's awards, I would like to introduce Ray Christensen, our chair, to say a few words on behalf of the Museums and Galleries of New South Wales Board, followed by New South Wales Arts Minister, Honourable Don Harwin. Thank you. On behalf of the Board of Museums and Galleries of New South Wales, I would like to welcome you to this year's 2021 Imagine Awards. I would also like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands on which we live and work. We pay respect to them as First Nations people with a continuing connection to land, place, water and community. I would like to thank Create New South Wales for their ongoing support, as well as our major supporters, New Australian Museums and Galleries Association New South Wales and Regional and Public Galleries of New South Wales. Imagine Awards are, are an important part of the Museums and Galleries New South Wales calendar and I always enjoy hearing about the incredible programs across the state. Recognising innovation and excellence in over 500 museums, galleries and Aboriginal cultural centres across New South Wales, the Imagine Awards acknowledges the outstanding achievements of over 9,000 paid and volunteer workers in fostering rich uh, local communities and their contribution to the extraordinary diversity within the New South Wales museum and gallery sector. The Imagine Awards promote and strengthen the New South Wales museum and gallery sector. They honour best practice, education programs, outreach projects, exhibitions, collection management projects and achievements of individuals. I would like to acknowledge all of the nominees and congratulate the winners and highly commended. Thank you. Hi, I'm joining you today from Gadigal Land. I want to pay my respects to Elders past and present and thank them for their custodianship of country. These awards celebrate the many achievements of our state's museums and galleries over the last 12 months. Right now, we're also seeing extraordinary investment uh, in museums right around the state, but we can do even better. Recently, I directed Create New South Wales to start work on developing a New South Wales museum strategy. It's our aim to ensure our museums continue to thrive while preparing for future challenges. You'll be hearing more over the coming months as we consult the sector. A key area of focus will be how museums 
tell stories in the digital age. The New South Wales Government through Create New South Wales has already funded valuable work since 2018 on MNG New South Wales Collections and Stories project, which highlights stories from museums across the state. Great work has already been done in Broken Hill and Orange, with a focus on a website that profiles select objects from their collections and partnering volunteer museums. The project will also expand to ex include Albury, Bathurst, Tamworth, Tweed and Wagga Wagga. And this year, I've awarded funding for six other regional areas across the state, which will have their collections digitally bought, brought to life. All up, almost $2 million has been allocated. Finally, as Aboriginal Affairs Minister, I'd like to commend all the work being done on promoting and growing Aboriginal art, culture and heritage. In particular, I'm impressed with the four inspirational new nominees for the ACHAA Award for Excellence by an Aboriginal Curator. Congratulations to all the nominees. And many thanks to everyone here who are exciting and delighting visitors to our state's museums and galleries. You're doing a wonderful job. Thank you and enjoy the uh, occasion. Thank you. And thank you, Ray. And thanks to the MG NSW board for all your support of this year. Thanks also to Chowchak Wing Museum for hosting tonight's streaming of this, of this award ceremony and also to Create New South Wales. As we all know, the past year has been challenging for everyone, not only for the logistical and financial operations of museums, galleries and Aboriginal cultural centres, but also for your staff, volunteers, artists, partners, audiences and broader communities. While it is in some ways a great disappointment not to be catching up and celebrating with our friends and colleagues in person, it is also extremely heartening to be able to share with you some of the incredible initiatives across the state. This year's awards are characterised by organisations going above and beyond their normal programming, connecting with audiences and communities and ensuring the sustainability of the sector. We've been particularly impressed with the sector's willingness and adaptiveness in adopting technology to connect with their audiences and communities, as well as a positive focus on local artists and projects. The ability of so many of the nominees to think outside the box and embrace unfamiliar approaches to exhibitions and engagement has been inspiring. Worthy of a special mention are the numerous small museums, galleries and heritage societies whose achievements were well above what their limited resources and reliance on volunteer labour would suggest possible. The award categories for Imagine 2021 are the Atcher Award for Outstanding Lifetime Contrib Contribution to New South Wales Aboriginal Culture, Heritage and Arts, the Atcher Award for Excellence by an Aboriginal Curator, Exhibitions, Engagement, the Innovation and Resilience Award and the Imagination Award. Museums and Galleries of New South Wales also wishes to recognise the contribution of three exceptional individuals to the sector. The New South Wales Aboriginal Cultural Heritage and Arts Association, or ACHA, is the peak body for Aboriginal community owned cultural venues such as cultural centres, knowledge centres, language centres, galleries, museum and keeping places across the state. Museums and Galleries of New South Wales supports ACHA through the provision of Secretariat and other services. This year, ACHA is presenting two awards. The first is for outstanding lifetime contribution to New South Wales Aboriginal culture, heritage and arts. And the second is for excellence by an Aboriginal curator. To announce the awards, Auntie Jeanette Crew, ACHA Chair and Chair of the Yakua Indigenous Knowledge Centre in Daniloquin, and also a previous recipient of the MNG Outstanding Award for Lifetime Contribution to New South Wales Aboriginal Culture, Heritage and Arts. Hello everyone, I'm pleased to be joining you from Wamba Wamba Perupa Perupa Country for these, for these awards. And I pay my respects to uh, my elders past and present and to the elders of all our nations present here today. Atcher is grateful to museums and galleries of New South Wales for the opportunity to present two awards this year, 
recognising the significant contributions of our elders and the talents of our emerging Aboriginal curators. Firstly, to the Acher Imagine Awards for outstanding lifetime contribution to New South Wales Aboriginal culture, heritage and the arts. Euphia Augustina Leota Bostock was born in Tweed Heads in 1936. Affectionately known as Femi, she is a proud Munanjali Bunjalang woman and respected elder. After moving to Sydney in the early 60s with her two daughters, Femi undertook artistic training at the East Sydney Technical College, Sydney College of Arts and the Red Ferns Eora Centre. At the same time, she became heavily involved in the Aboriginal struggle, working with many community organisations. With her brothers Lester and Gerald, Femi was a founding member of Sydney's Aboriginal Black Theatre in 1972. Femi's passion, creativity and cultural expression has long been directed towards the visual arts, working across many mediums, including textiles, printmaking, design and sculpture. She has an extensive exhibition history, both nationally and internationally, from travelling to Paris in 1987 as a textile and fashion designer, to having a work reproduced by Australia Post in 1999 for the Design Australia stamp series. Today, you will find Femi's work in the collections of the National Gallery of Australia, Hare House Museum and the National Museum of Australia. Femi was one of the 10 founding members in 1987 of the Mali Aboriginal Artists Cooperative and continues to be heavily involved as its chairperson while continuing to create inspiring works. A survey exhibition celebrating the work and life of Euphemia Bostock entitled Made with Love and created by Dr Bronwyn Bancroft is currently on display at Bumali Aboriginal Artists Cooperative in Leichhardt. For these reasons and so much more Euphemia Bostock is this year's recipient of the Atcha Award for Outstanding Lifetime Contribution to New South Wales Aboriginal Culture heritage and arts. Congratulations, Femi. And now to the Atcha Imagine Awards for Excellence by an Aboriginal Curator. This year, there are four nominations and they are Warwick Keane for the Terror Within at the Shoalhaven Regional Gallery, Laura McBride for Unsettled at the Australian Museum, Matt Paul for Ambassadors and Embassies at the Chow Chuck Wing Museum. Rika Jasinski for Day Robin at the State Library of New South Wales. The Etcher Committee congratulates all the nominees for their commitment to New South Wales Aboriginal art, culture and heritage, particularly through such difficult times as the museum and gallery closures. All nominees were of a high standard, but ultimately one stood out in terms of its vision, realisation and impact built on a broad and exhaustive community consultation. The Atcher Imagine Award for Excellence by an Aboriginal Curator goes to Laura McBride for Unsettled Australian Museum. And now I'd like to hand back to Brett for the rest of the award announcements. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Auntie Jeanette Crew, and congratulations to Auntie Euphemia Bostock and Laura McBride. Next up is the exhibitions category. This category makes a distinction between museum and gallery practice by granting awards separately to museums, heritage, and galleries and visual arts. It recognised excellence in innovation in exhibition practice, such as permanent or temporary exhibitions, exhibition design, exhibition publications and resources, and exhibition partnerships. The nominations in the exhibition projects for small galleries are 107 projects, Bank Art Museum Moree, Fairfield City Museum and Gallery, Pari, 
SH Irvine Gallery, Shoalhaven Regional Gallery, Tamworth Regional Gallery Museums, The Lockup, UNSW Galleries, and UTS Gallery. The judges chose to highly commend three nominations, Fairfield City Museum and Gallery for Here After, Pari for Sports Show, Shoalhaven Regional Gallery for The Terror Within, but the winner, the Imagine Award in Exhibition Projects for Small Galleries is The Lockup for Mian Uwe Wana by Nicole Monks. In Mian Uwe Wana, which translates to learning, becoming knowledgeable, Yamanji Wajudi Dutch and English artist Nicole Monks explored innate and unconscious interconnectedness to country. Developed collaboratively, collaboratively with 17 First Nations artists locally and nationally, the exhibition intertwined traditional Yamanji Wajiri and WA arts making practices with contemporary video, performance and installation to consider notions of knowledge transfer, the resilience of the stolen generations and the complexities of living off country on other people's unceded land. The nominees in exhibition projects, medium galleries are Australian Design Centre, Bathurst Regional Art Gallery, Blue Mountains Cultural Centre, Leo Kelly, Blacktown Arts, Maitland Regional Gallery, Mossman Art Gallery, New England Regional Art Museum, Newcastle Art Gallery, UNSW Galleries. The judges chose to highly commend two nominations, Leo Kelly, Blacktown Arts for Terra Firma, and UNSW Galleries for Friendship as a Way of Life. The winner of the Imagine Award in Exhibition Projects, Medium Galleries, is Newcastle Art Gallery for War War. This landmark exhibition, developed in collaboration with artist and curator Brian Robinson, featured over 130 works of art that showcased the evolution of Torres Strait Islander tradition and society. Presenting artworks from the 19th century to the contemporary traditions of today, the show included large-scale prints, sculptures, new media, and significant cultural artefacts allowing local Newcastle-born TSI community to experience their own culture through works of art created by their ancestors. The nominees in the exhibition project's large galleries are Art Gallery New South Wales, Campbelltown Art Centre, Casula Power House, Murray Art Museum Albury, and Museum of Contemporary Art Australia. The judges chose to highly commend two nominations, Campbelltown Art Centre for Space YZ and Casula Powerhouse for Bittersweet. The winner of the Imagine Award in Exhibition Projects, Large Galleries, is the Museum of Contemporary Art for Richard Bell, You Can Go Now. Richard Bell, You Can Go Now was the largest solo exhibition by artist and activist Richard Bell, bringing together over 30 years of his practice. The focus was not only on Bell's notorious persona, but on the human behind the practice, revealing a personal history that reflects the post-colonial Australian narrative of displacement, racism, and the erasure of First Nations histories. The exhibition, online platforms, publication, and embassy conversations in digital or Aboriginal embassy, a first of its kind in sovereign digital space, sought to actively engage wide-ranging audiences in important and timely conversations. The nominees in the exhibition project's small museums are Maury Plains Museum, Maria Museum, Allison Homestead Museum, Wyong, Jarvis Bay Maritime Museum, Rocky Hill War Museum. The judges chose to highly commend one nomination, Maria Museum, for Illuminated. The winner of the Imagine Award in Exhibition Projects Small Museums is Jarvis Bay Maritime Museum for Monguda Nungul. The Jarvis Bay Maritime Museum's new permanent exhibition, Monguda Nungul, tells the story of Jarvis Bay's past and present. The exhibition explores place and cultural connection through objects and photographs from the museum's collection, including Jarvis Bay's boat building heritage and tourism heritage, as well as the history of the Bay's indigenous people who've lived in the area for generations. Collaboration with the Jirinja and Rec Bay Aboriginal communities ensured stories were told through First Nations voices and included local Durga language titles for the first time in the museum. The nominees in the exhibition projects, medium museums are 
Albury Library Museum, Customs House, Fairfield City Museum and Gallery, Hawkesbury Regional Museum, Hurstville Museum and Gallery, and Strathfield Library. The judges chose to highly commend one nomination, Hawkesbury Regional Museum for Uncovered, but the winner of the Imagine Award in Exhibition Projects, Medium Museums, is Fairfield City Museum and Gallery for Travelling Sounds. Travelling Sounds was a multidisciplinary project exploring the historic and contemporary connections between music and migration in Western Sydney. Amplifying the voices of young artists with a migrant background, the exhibition and public programs celebrated local talent, offering a stage for experimentation and creativity. The exhibition showcased collection items, community loans and newly commissioned works. Travelling Sounds convincingly showed the often ignored influence of Sydney's fringe suburbs in shaping Australia's musical landscape. The nominees in the exhibition projects, large museums, are Australia Museum, Chachak Ring Museum, Old Government House and Sydney Living Museums. The judges chose to highly commend one nomination, Chachak Wing Museum, for Gululu Duwala Jaukiri. The winner of the Imagine Award in Exhibition Projects, Large Museums, is the Australian Museum for Unsettled. Designed as a right of reply to the 250th anniversary in 2020 of James Cook's East Coast voyage, Unsettled amplified First Nations voices and promoted truth-telling about Australia's foundation history and the ongoing legacy of colonisation. The exhibition is groundbreaking through its First Nations-led curation, presenting a rigor rigorously researched, nuanced narrative with a range of objects, images and experiences. Informed by an extensive community consultation process involving Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples from across Australia, Unsettled is defined by its priorit prioritisation of First Nations agency in every stage of this project. This year, Museums and Galleries of New South Wales chose to award three individual achievement awards. This award is made to honour individuals who have made a very significant contribution to the cultural sector in New South Wales over an extended period of time. The first of these three awards goes to Deborah Eli for her contribution over 15 years as CEO of Bundanon Trust, and in particular, the achievement in leading the organisation to its soon to be expanded art museum, which is set to make a major cultural contribution to the nation. We have a few words from Deborah to the highlights of her time at Bundanon. There's so many highlights from my time at Bundanon. I guess one of the main things I have to, to mention is that the incredible access I had to so many artists, hundreds of artists over the 15 years I was there, and access to their working studios, to their thought processes, and to seeing the kind of work they were making right at the very beginning of its inception. It's not an experience that many people have, and I think it's, it's certainly a privilege. But in particular, it's a privilege that we're able to bring thousands of school kids into contact with those contemporary artists and to bring them into the artist studios and to let them have that kind of potentially transformative experience because they don't often get the chance to see a working artist, possibly never in another, another time in their lives. And that can really change the way they think about art, the way they look at art in future, and also maybe triggers for some of them the thought that they might even be an artist. And I think that's really, really important. They come to understand and respect the professionalism and the dedication of artists. And it, it's, it's just wonderful to have been able to have shared that with so many kids. Thank you, Deborah, and congratulations. The next category is engagement. The engagement award is assessed across the museum and gallery sector. It celebrates best practice in ongoing programs, such as public programs, education resources, websites and social media, community engagement and participation. The nominees in the Engagement Award, small organisations are Maury Plains Museum, PARI, Tamworth Astronomy and Science Centre and Tamworth Regional Museum, and The Lockup. The judges felt that the standard in this category was of an incredibly high level and chose to highly commend Maury Plains Museum for Love and Lace, PARI for P2P and Tamworth Astronomy and Science Centre and Tamworth Regional Museum for Sky Canvas. So the winner of the Imagine Award in Engagement Small Organisation is The Lockup 
for how to make a parrot. This workshop coincided with Rosie Deacon's exhibition, How Do I Know My Parrot Is Happy? The intention behind the virtual workshop was to present an imaginative activity that could connect with audiences who are unable to visit the space due to COVID-19 restrictions or accessibility reasons. Workshop attendees made their own creatures to add to Deacon's aviary and over 400 parrots were created during the exhibition by visitors of all ages and abilities. Nominees in the Engagement Award medium organisations are Australian Design Centre, Bathurst Rail Museum, Bathurst Regional Art Gallery, Blue Mountains Cultural Centre, Grafton Regional Gallery, Lismore Regional Gallery, Maitland Regional Art Gallery, Newcastle Art Gallery, Shoalhaven Regional Gallery, Tamora Aviation Museum, UNSW Galleries, UTS Gallery and Art Collection. The judges to chose to highly commend two nominations, Bathurst Regional Art Gallery for Banha Truly Belong and Blue Mountains Cultural Centre for Critical Mass. The winner of the Imagine Award in Engagement Medium Organisations is UNSW Galleries for Forms of Being Together. Forms of Being Together was an online engagement program that explored queer kinship from different social and historical perspectives, engaging audiences and supporting practitioners during the COVID-19 pandemic. Accompanying a physical exhibition of the same name, the program sought to create connection and community through digital programming. Over seven months, the program encompassed 25 online initiatives, including a DJ set, artists in conversations, illustrated talks, essays, video content and workshops, live streamed and shared via Teams, Teams Live, Instagram, YouTube, Vimeo, Mixcloud, EDM, and the New South Wales Gallery's website. The nominees in the Engagement Award, large organisations are Chachak Wing Museum, Murray Art Museum, Sydney Living Museums. The winner, the Imagine Award in Engagement, large organisations is Chachak Wing Museum, for Academic Engagement, Object-Based Learning Program. Chachak Wing Museum's Academic Engagement Program draws upon a transdisciplinary collection of close to 500,000 objects, specimens and artworks combining object-based learning principles with the expertise of the whole curatorial and collection management team. In its first six months, 1,690 objects were used across learning sessions catering to 11,306 participants from humanities, business, mathematics, economics, indigenous studies, anatomy, biology, creative writing, and architecture disciplines. The program is exceeding expectations and running at capacity, meaning a core priority of the museum to ensure all Sydney University staff and students engage meaningfully with the museum's collections. The next Museums and Galleries of New South Wales Individual Achievement Award goes to someone whose tireless work over 22 years has made a lasting impact on not only her institution, but also the sector more broadly. As Director of the Museum of Contemporary Art Australia, she was responsible for championing free entry to the museum, delivering the major expansion in 2012, which included the National Centre for Creative Learning. I am, of course, referring to Elizabeth Ann McGregor, and we have a few words from Lizanne on her tenure at the MCA. One of the most important moments in my career was definitely the day that we went free, thanks to Telstra. I had actually made free access a condition of my appointment because, uh, but unfortunately the museum was facing such financial difficulties, it was very hard for the board to agree to that. So until we were able to get a sponsor to underwrite it, it couldn't happen. And there were also the doubters who said, oh, nobody will come, you know, it's still contemporary art, people go to the beach in Sydney, you should be in Melbourne, all these sort of negative stereotypes. So I was a little anxious because we'd chosen to go free and at the same time put the Biennale of Sydney right through the building for the first time. And so that was a, a real statement about contemporary art. Uh, and I did have some sleepless nights, but the day we went free and I walked through the galleries and I saw so many different kinds of people chatting, looking at works, arguing, discussing what they liked, what they didn't like. That was a, a moment when I thought, this is the kind of museum I want to run. Thank you, Lizanne, and congratulations and best wishes on your journey ahead. Next up is the Resilience and Innovation Award. 
This category recognises the outstanding efforts of museums and galleries during hardship and celebrates excellence in innovation in exhibition practice, resilience, building projects and engagement programs. Projects were assessed according to the following criteria. Quality of the program's aims and achievements, the extent of the program's impact on the resilience of the organisation and community, and a well-planned and innovative program that is clearly articulated. The nominees in the, in, in the Innovation and Resilience Award, projects under $10,000 are Australian Design Centre, Grafton Regional Gallery, Hamilton Cottage Museum from Parramatta and Dis District Historical Society, Southern Highlands Artisans Collective, Sydney Living Museums, Tamworth Regional Gallery and Tweed Regional Museum. The judges chose to highly commend two nominations, Grafton Regional Gallery for Get Creative in the Clarence and Sydney Living Museums for Go Back to the Past at Walkley's House, live virtual event. The winner of the Imagine Award in the Innovation and Resilience under $10,000 goes to Hamilton Cottage Museum for their new website and virtual reality tour. The Parramatta and District Historical Society developed a website for the Hamilton Cottage Museum, which included a 360 degree virtual reality tour in collaboration with Western Sydney University tourism students. The website has improved the appeal of the museum by providing online access to domestic and international visitors and has significantly enhanced the society's ability to promote Hamilton Cottage. In 12 months, the website has been visited over 1,000 times. The nominees in the Innovation and Resilience Award, $10,000 to $100,000, are the Archive New South Wales, Bankstown Art Centre, Maitland Regional Art Gallery, Murray Art Museum, Albury, and Parramatta Artist Studios. The judges chose to highly commend one nomination, Bankstown Art Centre for Symbiosis 2020 Bankstown Biennial. The winner, the Imagine Award in the Innovation and Resilience Award, $10,000 to $100,000, is Maitland Regional Art Gallery for Our Place Co-Design Project. Our Place Co-Design Project saw First Nations students and architecture students from the University of Newcastle co-design a welcome space for First Nations peoples in the Maitland Regional Art Gallery grounds. The students shared ideas, gathered objects and explored the gallery's grounds before developing concept plans and maquettes which incorporated bush tucker, landscaping structures and natural materials. The project drew upon partnerships and networks to authentically engage local communities in creative activities with the aim of establishing feelings of ownership of the gallery for future First Nations audiences. The welcome space will be constructed in December 2021. There was only one nominee in the Innovation and Resilience Award for projects over $100,000. However, the judges decided that it was worthy of an award and so the award goes to Lawrence Rural and River Museum for Lawrence Unlocked. The Lawrence Historical Society constructed a 1930s style ironclad shed to use as a new display area for the history of Lawrence. This project was possible due to the enthusiasm and dedication of the museum's volunteers who fundraised for the project, sourced materials and worked in all weather to complete the new shed. The shed's construction has invigorated the local community and created a lasting attraction for the village which continues to preserve and exhibit items for the enjoyment, education and enrichment of the community, visitors and future generations. The final Museums and Galleries of New South Wales Individual Achievement Award for 2021 goes to a man who has been at the helm of the Sydney Jewish Museum for over 19 years. His achievements include the varied upgrades to museum exhibition spaces, allowing for the telling of not just stories associated with the Holocaust and Jewish culture, but also the telling of broader human rights achievements and challenges. Congratulations to Norman, Norman Seligman, CEO of the Sydney Jewish Museum. We have a few words from Norman about his time at the museum. Yeah, the highlights of my time at the museum uh, could be covered by the fact that I came to the museum and Australia 20 years ago. Prior to that, I'd worked in a corporate environment in both South Africa and in France. And I came here with a very, very different experience to what the museum one was going to offer to me. Having been offered the job of CEO at the museum, what it gave to me was the opportunity to meet with an incredible number of people, an amazing group, both within and outside of the museum world. 
uh, there was obviously the Holocaust survivors, there was the staff, there was the board, uh, and there were volunteers at the museum, but also a large number of visitors. Coming to the museum over the years that I've been here, we've had um, prime ministers, governor generals, uh, premiers, uh, governors, cabinet ministers, politicians, uh, and the most amazing academics and world-renowned authorities on both the Holocaust and Judaism. And then, of course, there have been all the visitors that I've had the opportunity to meet as well. And without being at the museum, I just would never have had that opportunity. So for me, that really has been the highlight, just who I've been, had the opportunity to meet. Thank you, Norman, and congratulations again to our individual achievement recipients. We are very grateful for all your hard work and dedication to the sector. The final award to be announced today is the Imagination Award, a new category from 2020 seeking to highlight the projects and innovative concepts which use a museum or gallery in new ways or utilise technology to counteract physical isolation or connect with new audiences. The winner will receive a $3,000 cash grant to help make the chosen ideas a reality. The nominees in the Imagination category are Maitland Regional Art Gallery, Old Government House National Trust of Australia, New South Wales, Port Macquarie Museum, Sutherland Shire Historical Society. The winners of the Imagination category is Maitland Regional Art Gallery for celebrating art and architecture and country. In 2021, Maitland Regional Art Gallery partnered with the University of Newcastle in a collaborative project that involved First Nations students from local schools and architecture students co-designing a new space in the gallery's grounds. Maitland Regional Art Gallery proposes to celebrate this new space, which will be constructed in December of 2021 with a community event. Led by First Nations students, the event will incorporate artist talks, creative activities, indigenous plantings and music in a celebration of art, architecture and country. The gallery believes this celebration will mark an important cultural and community achievement, the addition of an inclusive, welcoming cultural space for First Nations artists, educators and audiences visiting the gallery in the future. And that concludes the 2021 announcements. Thank you to everyone who nominated for an award this year. Once again, we have produced a booklet of the 2021 nominees as a PDF via our website, as well as hi highlighting the nominations on social media and our website. We also look forward to sharing the outcomes of the successful Imagination Award project via our website and bi-monthly newsletter alert. Thank you again to Minister for the Arts, Honourable Don Harwin, and also to Create New South Wales. On behalf of M&G board and staff, I'd like to thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Everything we do aims to support and improve the visitor experience you all work so hard to provide. We look forward to working with you all in 2022. Thank you.